For all the Jural Assembly's Part 11 Committees of Safety by Anna Von writes. In trying to find guidance in our shared past, many people including myself have diligently researched the practices of the founders for help going forward. This has resulted in many discoveries and helpful traditions coming from many substantially different local county and state jural assemblies. In the 18th century communities were much more isolated than they are today and neighbors knew each other in ways and for purposes that are not much in evidence today. Your neighbor wasn't just someone who lived nearby. Your neighbor's character, skills, knowledges, physical strength, tools and willingness to share all the above had a direct impact on you and your family's safety and well-being. The exigencies of life in the colonies promoted an awareness of the common good and the public welfare that had nothing to do with public assistance checks or food stamps. In the contentious days prior to the Declaration of Independence our once relatively homogeneous communities were split between the Patriots and the Tories loyal to England. This split caused great social unrest and dis-ease that we can scarcely understand today, and affected people even in their religious practices. Just as the Church of England separated from the Catholic Church over political and social differences, the American Anglican Church was split in half. Patriots became Episcopalians and Tories remained Anglican. I mention this only to demonstrate how deeply felt and how fundamentally disruptive the revolution was. Suddenly, there were spies and enemies in every corner. Your dear friends who were Tories no longer spoke to you, and vice versa. People you had known and trusted and depended upon all your life for vital services would no longer do business with you, over the issue of independence. It was in this atmosphere in the years leading up to the revolution that committees of safety were formed by the Patriots. These committees served a multitude of functions in all the various communities. They provided an effective spy network to keep tabs not only on what the British were doing, but what their Tory neighbors were doing. They organized assemblies at pubs and in churches and schools and private homes. They established stockpiles of guns and ammunition and food, medical supplies, and tools. So now we come to a time when, as in the days before the revolution, people are alarmed about the decayed state of our government and its now obvious malfunctioning. Most people have not yet been told the history that got us here, but when they realize that a fundamental part of the federal government has been missing for 150 years, they listen up and begin to grasp the seriousness of the situation and also to realize the damage that has been done by those we trusted as our allies in war and peace, Britain and the Roman Catholic Church. This gross breach of trust naturally engenders feelings of anger, fear, disorientation, and yes, a certain degree of paranoia. Once again, committees of safety are forming. I am not against the principle of having a committee of safety associated with each state jural assembly, but must advise that we are not at war and there is no intention or need for us to engage in any great struggle other than a mental and spiritual and emotional one. The law is firmly on our side of the issues and our jurisdiction, our states and our federation of states were never even involved in the civil war. Our land and soil jurisdiction has been at peace continuously and remains so. Ignorance of our own history and the fundamentals of law are our greatest enemies. Neither England nor the Church of Rome want to fight with us, and as for the respective territorial and municipal governments, they are now largely staffed by other Americans, howbeit, Americans employed by foreign powers, who have no real interest in destroying property in America and fighting with their neighbors. So the conditions now are fundamentally different than they were prior and during the revolution and committees of safety, though they may be helpful in organizing and coordinating various kinds of support, including physical support of jural assembly members, should not fall into the trap I described in seven discipline as the safety angle. It is and has long been the practice of federal agents, both territorial and municipal, to infiltrate patriot organizations and cause both disruption and to promote various kinds of disinformation. When all else fails, they try to induce a certain brand of paranoia and get people hatching contingency plans and stockpiling guns and that sort of thing so as to provide a rational excuse for arresting them. When such moles get extremely desperate, they will also try to introduce contraband, illegal weapons and substances, that they use for the same purpose of providing an excuse for arrests. It is therefore of the utmost importance to be prudent when organizing a committee of safety, and to not entrust its direction to hotheads and gullible people who will reliably fall victim to such intrigues and drag everyone else down with them. 
It is also necessary to explicitly restrict their activities in behalf of the state jural assembly per se. In most state jural assemblies, the security for assembly functions, meetings, and meeting spaces, is provided by an elected marshal at arms, with assistance from members of the Committee of Safety. Their duty with respect to the state jural assembly is to provide a safe location for meetings, to be prepared to remove disruptive participants, to be aware of any suspicious activities such as bringing in contraband and to help organize the state militia. Please note that the state militia is a different and separate organization from the state of state militia, though in fact the members of state of state militias are often confused and think that they are serving their state militia instead. State militias are in fact staffed by members of the state jural assembly. Serving in and or supporting the state militia is one of the duties and responsibilities of state jural assembly membership. Men aged 21 to 45 who are physically fit are expected to join and support the state militia upon acceptance into the state jural assembly. Conscientious objectors are traditionally allowed to pay a fee in lieu of their militia duty, as are women and elders and others who for some physical or mental reason cannot serve. The American government at the state level is set up like the Swiss government. Every Swiss is trained to use firearms and to serve their community in emergency capacities. They all know basic first aid. They all belong to community safety brigades. This system is highly effective in promoting public safety, reducing crime, and keeping the peace. Jural assembly members have the respect and cooperation of local law enforcement and are not viewed as outsiders or threats. Our land jurisdiction sheriffs depend upon the jural assembly and the committee of safety for a ready supply of deputies when the need arises. All of this is perfectly normal, lawful, and our unarguable right to organize as part of our right to peaceably assemble. The way to view this is that we are being more or less forced to accept the services of two very large multinational business conglomerates and they want to make sure that their contracts are renewed, so the nature of their activity is designed to squelch any effort that unfavorably reviews their performance or which seeks to alter the fast and loose administration of those services which they have hitherto enjoyed. And, in the current climate, they are being obliged to compete with each other. Suddenly, their standard of service is being examined by the people of this country and they are both found lacking. This results in the territorial government administered by the Queen, like any business, initiating reforms to keep their customers and in the municipal government being administered by municipal congress trying to keep their slaves, too. The rest of us, especially members of the state jural assemblies, are stuck in the middle playing the role of a performance review and oversight committee and taking the necessary steps to enforce the contracts we have with these service providers, the constitutions, as well. As addressing the more fundamental issues of finally reconstructing our own federal states of states and ultimately, preparing for a continental land jurisdiction Congress. Outside of working with the marshal at arms to secure the meetings and meeting spaces of the state jural assemblies and helping with induction of jurors as members and or supporters of the actual state militia, committees of safety should not engage in any activities that can be misconstrued as anti-government or violent or threatening. Committees of safety are meant to coordinate the peacekeeping forces of our land and soil jurisdiction states and as we are not at war and have no need nor intention of fighting with our own territorial or municipal employees, the best additional use of the committees of safety is an educational one. We need outreach to and within the current existing military services and law enforcement agencies. They need to be apprised of the differences between the state and the states of states which have been operating on our soil, and they need to be reassured that our peacekeeping forces are intelligently managed and intent on keeping the peace, not fomenting any kind of external controversy or war. America belongs to Americans. It is our right to act in our natural and birthright capacity, to accept all gifts and waive all benefits offered by foreign subcontractors, and to conduct our country's affairs according to the actual stipulations governing it. Anyone who has any problem with that is obviously in the wrong, and acting on presumptions not in evidence in our public records. Hit like, share, subscribe and get ready for many more videos from Anna Von Wrights.